There is a hurricane-torn stretch of coastline along the northernmost point of Yucatan, Mexico, where the wild flamingos outnumber the local fishermen. Less than three hours' drive from the tourist mecca of Cancun, yet seemingly centuries removed from its modern chaos, the Mayan sun kisses the quiet harbor of San Felipe each morning and turns its fertile waters to gold at each day's end. It is here that a tangle of rivers and tide flow through an impenetrable labyrinth of mangroves, forming the perfect nursery for the spawn of the Silver King, or Sabalo as he is known in Spanish. And it is here that juvenile tarpon, or sabalitos, can be found in great numbers, all too willing to take a fly and then take flight in incredible aerial performances. But lest you think this is all about soliloquy and sunsets, it's also about undiluted Mexican culture, incredible bird life, and some of the world's finest and most rewarding fly fishing for baby tarpon, and a few of the grown-ups. I'm your host, Joe Daniel, and we're about to go wild on the fly in northern Yucatan. Frigate birds welcome the sun as the sleepy town of San Felipe wakes to a gorgeous morning along the wild northern coast of Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula. Our group of wild on the fly anglers has traveled here to explore a remarkable baby tarpon fishery and possibly intercept the schools of larger fish known to follow the Sardinia migration this time of year. After a short first night's sleep, we're up early to meet the incoming tide and everyone digs into a traditional local breakfast served by Tarpon K Lodge Manager, Beto Mendez. Only hours before, after a late night arrival dinner, we sorted through gear and bags of bugs, from crease flies to floating shrimp. We received a briefing from outfitter Marcos Roos, who inspected the flies we brought and then delivered that all-important strip strike lecture known to tarpon anglers everywhere. He then gave us our marching orders for the first morning. I prefer to start with the baby tarpon, the first day. Our guides, all local fishermen from San Felipe, are ready for us just outside the lodge, and as we gather our rods and pair up for the morning, a flock of perfect pink flamingos passes by overhead. The area surrounding San Felipe is a birder's paradise and is particularly famous for its concentration of American flamingos. These birds are headed west to the vast aquatic wilderness of Parque Natural San Felipe. We are quick to follow. Environmental designer Henry Beer and I are fishing together this first morning. And as we finish preparing our gear, Carlos, our guide, motors us quietly into the fishery. Hammered repeatedly by hurricanes and tropical storms, the northern coast of Yucatan is a boneyard of bleached white mangrove skeletons, contrasting strongly against the vibrant green of living growth. The area is an aquatic web of hundreds of saltwater creeks, which ebb and flow with the turning of the tide. Since the tide is currently coming in, Carlos tells us the fish will be pushing far up into the creeks. And so it is into this tangle of twisted branches and submerged logs that we go in search of baby tarpon. Exciting? Absolutely. Easy? Well, not always. I'm supposed to cast in this? The dense mangrove jungle of the Rio Lagartos estuary in northern Yucatan, Mexico, is home to an abundance of life, both feathered and finned. We're after sabalitos, or baby tarpon, and it's now my turn on the front of the boat. Since we haven't yet jumped a fish, I consult with our guide Carlos and decide to try a different fly. Carlos is intrepid, and since the tarpon have moved far up the creeks on the high tide, he's more than willing to follow, looking for hidden rias of open water. We occasionally find ourselves at a true dead end, forcing a retreat. But if it's just an issue of a single tree standing in the way of making a good cast, no problemo. Carlos can be incredibly effective with just his boat anchor.
Finally, I've got a little room to cast, and we've spotted a nice fish rolling at the back of this pool. This ought to be easy. I just never had him a hook. Right to the boat. A little while later, I get a second chance. I may have found a fly that works, but that's no guarantee I'm going to land a fish. This tarpon gives me a serious introduction to the continuing snarl of branches and logs that exist on the bottom of these mangrove waterways. It was wrapped around a log and had a 15 pound fish on the back of it. But other than that, it was pretty good line. As the tide ebbs, Carlos slips back out of the creek. And with Henry on the front of the boat again, we finally find the perfect piece of open water. With room to do battle, Henry expertly brings our first fish to hand, and it's a beauty. It was a bit of a humbling morning, but now that we have the stink off the boat, our attitudes have soared. We're down here in Tarpon Key. We've got a fabulous little baby tarpon, a sabalito, and we're having a great day. Since the tides this week are changing in the morning and again in the evening, we head back in for lunch and a siesta as we will do so every day during our stay. Tarpon Cay Lodge is actually the San Felipe Hotel, which sits conveniently in a private marina at one end of town. Beto serves up a hot lunch each day of fresh fish and local Mayan cuisine. Today it's barbecued lamb, butterflied grouper, and steamed red snapper, even more delicious with his secret Mayan salsa. Earlier that day, while we were all fishing the morning tide, Beto made a trip to a small local ranch that often supplies the hotel with fresh meat. Traditional farm-to-table food sourcing is making a resurgence in the U.S., although many Americans find the graphic realities of the process a bit unsettling. Here it is simply a way of life. Beto makes his choice and then efficiently butchers his purchase. By lunchtime, everyone is feasting on fresh lamb marinated in garlic and pepper. As a special treat for us, Beto has stuffed the lamb stomach in a traditional Mayan recipe, and he prepares it tableside. The leaves, you mean the liver? Yeah. What do you say? The testicles of the lamb? <laughs> the stomach in a small pieces, and then I'm going to scramble with this sauce. Wonderful, Joy. Very good. <laughs> While most of our group retires to the comfortable guest rooms of the lodge for a much needed siesta, I go on a tour of San Felipe with Beto, who promises to show me something very traditionally Mexican when we get to his house. San Felipe is a friendly and very colorful community of about 15,000 native Mexican and Mayan people. Beto tells me that the entire town is descended from eight original families, and tombstones at the local cemetery support that lineage. As we take in the local sites, we run into a member of our group, attorney Mike Dominic, purchasing tequila for the evening's cocktail hour back at the lodge. The main street eventually ends at the harbor where fishing boats unload their daily catch. San Felipe was founded in 1916 as a commercial fishing port and still operates a sizable fleet of pongas that ply the fertile waters of the Rio Lagartos estuary for seasonal catches of shrimp, octopus, and delicious red snapper. Boats play a central role in the lives of San Felipe and the harbor is always picturesque with activity. As promised, Beto takes me to his tiny home in a small development at the edge of town. There I meet his son, Pepito, and the other mysterious members of his family he had hinted about earlier. Wow, this was something I hadn't expected. 
Once a traditional sporting event, cockfighting is now against the law throughout the United States and most of Europe. But it is still legal in Mexico, perpetuated by cultural and religious significance. Beto is obviously proud of his sport and explains the process in great detail. We cut the natural sport with this, yeah. you know, like this. Right. And then we use some uh, matches, some fire. Yeah. We melt it here yeah. and then we put the natural spur like this. Then uh, the next season, the season is in uh, December to May. To May to December, the feathers grown up, you know, and they don't fight. They look like ladies. Struggling with conflicting emotions of concern and curiosity, I wade deeper into complicity, asking Beto if I can watch two of the roosters fight. He agrees to stage a mock battle, a friendly round of cock sparring, if you will. We need to put this for not injury any rooster, you know. First, he affixes the avian equivalent of boxing gloves over each bird's natural spurs in order to protect them from injury. Then it's both cocks into the ring and the rooster's aggressive behavior takes over.